Music Magpie is a re-commerce business in the UK and the US, specializing in refurbished consumer technology. It's listed on the AIM market where it has a market capitalization of 65 million pounds. I'm delighted to be joined by the co-founder and group chief executive, Steve Oliver. So first of all, Steve, for those who aren't familiar with Music Magpie, what makes the company unique? Uh, hello, Sarah, and thank you for uh, uh, having me on here. Um, why are we unique? Well, uh, we're unique in that we've got two sets of customers. So how's that for a start? Um, so uh, I do believe, actually, you've been a, a customer of ours. So I'm not sure whether you've sold or bought from us or both. But um, actually, yes, we are unique in that we are really promoting that circular economy. Um, and whether you're selling to us or buying from us, well, after we've refurbished the product that we've uh, bought, we aim to sort of offer that champion uh, credentials in terms of for, for the consumer and now we, uh, more so for the environment. So if you're selling to us, fixed valuation, free logistics, we pay when product arrives with us in our warehouse. So occasionally uh, I call ourselves the lazy man's eBay. So lots of people buy from eBay, but perhaps there's a little bit more of a barrier to sell because it takes that a uh, bit more of effort. So we try and make it as easy as possible. And whether you're buying from us, it's uh, you're buying as, as good as new product uh, after we've refurbished it with a 12 month warranty on in as good as new condition for hopefully a fraction of the price. So um, yeah, we very much operate in that circular economy uh, with our two sets of customers that of course we work hard to, to bring together so our buyers can sell and vice versa. <laughs> Well, Steve, I don't consider myself lazy, but I am indeed and remain so a seller and a buyer. And you have indeed put bread and butter on my table quite a few times. So thank you very much for that. But there are obviously I don't know you from an investor point of view, and you've got some really interesting strategic in initiatives underway, including a phone rental offering, a corporate recycling service and a partnership with Asda. So talk to us about how they're evolving and what the long-term growth plans are. Yeah, so I guess like any good business, we're looking for how to disrupt ourselves, how to innovate, take ourselves to the next level, and also think about how we can make it even easier for a customer to access us, whether they are selling to us or whether they're buying from us. Uh, and indeed now, as you mentioned, we have a, a rental monthly subscription, but just let's touch on for a second, selling to us, we've had a long established model where you, as I say, uh, get a valuation from us off our website or app, uh, we provide the logistics, uh, and then you send it in to us for payment. Well, actually, now we've launched a, a smart drop kiosk in Asda foyers. So we're rolling these out nationally at the moment, we'll get up to 300 uh, by the end of this year. This allows people to sell their old mobile phone in as little as two to three minutes and pay for their shopping in store that day. Uh, so perhaps they can buy the bread and butter, uh, as you say, to, to put on their table. But as they love this because it's a really good ESG friendly solution uh, for them to offer their customers. Obviously, you know, it's a time when, you know, cash is tighter for some consumers. If we can make it even easier, even more trusted, even more convenient, that they can literally sell that device in a kiosk uh, by uh, inserting it into the inspection hatch. As I say, it's a couple of minute process um, and they get instant payment. So that was a sort of new disruptive way of, of us buying as a consumer selling because I guess what we recognize is our biggest competitor is consumer apathy in doing nothing with their old device in leaving it in that, in my case, man drawer that Michael McIntyre talks about, but that box under the stairs that everybody's got um, of old devices. So 16 billion pounds worth uh, of old devices, Sarah, are in, uh, you know, those boxes and drawers. So if we can get them out and make it even easier, um, that's really important to us. So that's as, as a partnership um, with Asda. Uh, we're doing other things uh, with them too. We utilize their logistics service. But then our new rental offer, as I say, alternative to buying refurbished, reconditioned product from us is now you can do a monthly subscription rental offer. More accessible, more flexible, starts at $8.99 a month. Great reconditioned, refurbished phone. Uh, and as I say, it's really allowing users to... The phone is probably the most important item in our lives. It's all our lives. I think you'd rather leave home without your clothes than your phone. 
Um, so actually, uh, more and more people are splitting their handset with the airtime rather than just doing a deal with the network directly. So if we can facilitate that, you can rent a phone from us, a really, really good, uh, very recent phone for, say, £20 a month, do an airtime deal for a £10, £15 a month. <clears throat> You've got a better handset, better airtime, and a cheaper price. So again, just trying to make the service even more accessible for our customers. Steve, today you've announced that Music Magpie has launched its products on back market in the US and the UK. Now, back market isn't a new stock market. So what is it and how does it benefit the group? Yeah, so back market uh, is a French owned business set up by uh, an individual uh, I've got to know uh, very well. Very similar mindset and principles about the importance of sustainability of refurbished product and the good that it does for the environment. So every um, iPhone, as an example, that gets recycled saves about 60 kilos of carbon that it is saving in terms of emissions um, and the e-waste. So I mentioned all those unwanted and, you know, phones that have been uh, left in drawers, etc. before. Um, so back market is bringing together trusted sellers. It's a marketplace. So it doesn't buy, it doesn't refurbish, and it doesn't sell itself. It invites uh, and it's very strict with who it allows onto its platform to resell um, its product. They have to meet quality criteria, et cetera. Uh, but we're really excited to bring our range of inventory. So it's not just smartphones, it's games, consoles, tablets, wearables, um, et cetera. Uh, so a really good range of over 2000 SKUs that we'll be uh, bringing to back market. So great way for customers to access us whether they want to buy from a platform or direct uh, on Music Magpie, we can service that customer. I'm very happy to do so. So it sounds like back market, this initiative is new territory for you. So therefore I'm wondering, is this a proof of concept that you're developing with a view to making further relationships like this? Uh, it's funny, Sarah, that actually, if anything, it's a return back to more the roots and the early stages of our business. So actually, uh, I'm looking at my own little image uh, at the top there, that little painting behind me is a painting that eBay kindly gave us um, three or four years ago when we became the first seller in the world to hit 5 million positive ratings. Uh, we're now significantly over 10 million ratings. So the business grew up trading on eBay and Amazon as the two world's biggest platforms. And it's a bizarre statement for a small business that started in uh, my Stockport garage many years ago that we're the world's biggest seller in the history of Amazon and eBay. And really accessing, you know, the world's eyeballs can access our inventory. And they've played a hugely important role in our business and continue to do so. And this is an extension of that, you know, as I mentioned before, whether they're selling or renting directly from us on Music Magpie or being platform agnostic, whether they're buying from us off one of the platforms and now back market are doing such wonderful work with educating people of the power of refurbished technology. Um, it's really an extension of what we've done in our history, but allowing us to access more and more consumers in the UK and in the US. I like that. It's like coming back to your circular economy because you also, speak, you also speak a lot about sustainability. You spoke about ASDA and their ESG credentials and how you are influencing that. But through your Smart For You, Smart For The Planet ethos, what, a, what is that? It's not just platitudes, is it? What does it mean for the group? Well, I guess it, it plays to those two sort of um, champion credentials, both for consumers. So times are tough at the moment. When the business was founded by myself and Walt, my co-founder, many, many years ago, Martin Lewis started covering the business as a great way for customers to just raise cash. So many years ago, he sat on uh, the couch with Lorraine Kelly on Good Morning Britain and talked about this new website that buys your old DVDs for up to three pounds and we still do some of that, although we're very much now consumer tech. Um, but that really put established our credentials as that great way, you know, debt free, don't don't payday loan and all those other nasty things that you can do. Actually, just sell your old stuff. Now, actually, what's fascinating for us as a business is the other side of the equation, that's smart for the planet. We've always been a recycling business. That's what we do. That's our business model. But it never really resonated until the last maybe three, four, five years where people have really woken up to this whole 
well, be kind to each other and your customers and your community, but the planet. And, and I think that was something, again, accelerated in the pandemic and just about the importance of looking after the planet, especially to young people and for our young people. Um, and actually, that those credentials now really, really matter. You know, youngsters in particular have gone from being a bit... Suspicious is probably too strong of second-hand product, but... And now it's, you know, whether it's vintage clothes or refurbished tech, you can save money. That's smart for me, but also I'm doing something good for the planet. And I'll, I'll actually tell people about that. That's smart and savvy. So I think, you know, both of those aspects now are really important to the overall offer. So kindness, credentials, savviness. But why should I invest in you? Does the company make any money? Why is it a compelling investment case? Uh, yes, we do make money. Uh, is is that the answer to that? So last year we made uh, twelve million of EBITDA on our, our group turnover of about um, one hundred and fifty million. We've got some really, really, as we talked about, so these growth initiatives. I think how we feel at Music Magpie is the the world has kind of moved towards us. You know, if the pandemic uh, moved people a little bit more online. Uh, I, I think there was an acceleration of, 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 you know, the demographic, especially, you know, my mum and dad now shop online. They've now got themselves a smartphone as well, by the way, uh, for the first time. Uh, it, I have great fun uh, training dad how to uh, how to use it. Um, but I think, you know, it really has pushed uh, that demographic of, of people as well. So the world's moved towards it in terms of the consumer offer, the environmental offer. We've got these growth initiatives, whether it's our kiosk selling to us, the rental offer. We haven't really talked about the corporate side of the business. We're very much growing our services that we offer to corporate customers as well as consumers because of chaos, even more so if anything than consumers, they really woke them up to the importance of ESG and doing something smart uh, and recycling their old devices, et cetera. So we've got those great growth initiatives. We've got our US business, which is a drop great untapped potential um, for the future. But, you know, I think we really see some great growth potential for the future. And as you can probably sense, I'm very excited and very passionate about the, uh, the, the, what the future holds for us. Well, you are the co-founder and I'm getting a sense that Music Magpie is actually a metaphor for you. It's an extension of your personality. And throughout your career, you've been very good at identifying consumer trends, affordability, recyclability, the circular economy. So I'm wondering what's next? Oh, that's a question. Um, <clears throat> I think, uh, you, I mean, thank you for those kind words, but um, I, d I do think, um, yeah, that, that circular economy and the acceptance of, of it, you know, ownership is less important. The subscription economy that's now so prevalent across. Um, the one thing I will say is I, I do very much think this circularity for both businesses. I think brands and retailers have really woken up now to the importance of what you do with the old one when buying a new one. And I'm being deliberately generic there in saying that could be an electrical item, it could be an item of sportswear, it could be a musical instrument, it could be an item of children or baby wear that they've outgrown. But I think the brand and the retailer is now woken up to, it's really important to offer an ESG solution and actually potentially offer a discount by buying back the old one. And I think that's something that we will see more and more. And I think Music Magpie, um, it is still called music from our roots, but people understand that the, what the brand stands for, and it is more and more that circular aspect that we can offer consumers and corporates. And I remain a consumer. Steve Oliver, co-founder and group chief executive of Music Magpie. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you, Sarah.